Hello and welcome to Hug and the Snug. Today I'm joined by Peter Labon, who is the Chief Exec of International Synergies, and I believe we're going to talk about industrial symbiosis today. That's right, and thank you very much for the invitation. You're very welcome. Before we go any further, you may have noticed it's called Hug and the Snug, so I believe it's if you don't mind. <laughs> Great, so um, I'm going to start by saying I know nothing about industrial symbiosis and in fact I couldn't even tell you what it means it sort of sounds like <laughs> some sort of manufacturing ecosystem or, or something so perhaps we should start by going back to basics and you can tell me a bit about what it is well you, you certainly got half of it there uh, because the ecosystem part uh, you know, might suggest that there's something coming from from nature and the the metaphor is from if you like from industry ecology where we try to learn from nature and for Industrial symbiosis, uh, you know, perhaps an example might be in nature where you get dissimilar organisms that come together for mutual benefit. A typical example might be you see cattle in, in the field with birds on their backs. The cattle don't move, the birds have a feed, we move the parasites and the cattle. So they're very, they're very different. You know, one's flying, one's stood there in the field chewing grass but they both get benefit from that. And what we try to do with industrial symbiosis is take that kind of example and put it into practice in industry. Okay, so can you give me quite a, a quick and simple example of what that might mean in practice? Certainly, um, uh, and, and, you know, perhaps before the example, uh, to put it in context, if you think about it, you know, both industry and institutions are tend to be organised in silos, still, e even today. Uh, there are attempts to, you know, for cross-sector working and cross-departmental working, but typically everything is still you know, within the company boundary or within the sector or down the supply chain or in government terms within the department. And what we're trying to do with industry symbiosis is to break down all those barriers and bring the diversity of industry sectors together, whether it be big industries, small industries, whatever resource they have, whether it be energy, materials, logistics, asset utilisation. So a quick, very quick example would be um, my favourite one, it's from my hometown in Birmingham in the North East, where there's a chemical company whose byproducts, if you like, were uh, waste steam and CO2. And through a workshop and an introduction through the Industry Symbiosis Network, um, we brought them together with a market gardener. And again, if you think about it, what do market gardeners like? They, they need heat for their greenhouses and CO2 as a growing medium. So it's the classic example where a market gardener co-located with a chemical company, the CO2 was just pumped straight into the greenhouses and the waste heat was used to heat the greenhouses and there you have it in the northeast of England not an area renowned for tomato growing but it's probably one, one of the biggest tomato growing areas in Europe now through industrial symbiosis. Okay so it's a bit like we go back to your your cattle and the bird you know then they're, they're not doing it uh, out of the goodness of their hearts there's an obvious benefit for both of those animals and it's the same thing in the example that you just gave but as you said with how sometimes we see in ecosystems that very different species work together um, that must be a challenge in industry to get to get very different um, sectors from industry to work together um, I imagine that perhaps doesn't always come naturally. Um, what are the kind of challenges that you face in trying to encourage organisations to work in this way? It, it, it is a challenge because uh, uh, as you say it, it's, it's a non-traditional way of working and I think o over the years and over time um, you know, industries have been brought up uh, even you know, to work together but again within the same sector and what we find that when we can break those barriers down and bring companies together from different sectors, the opportunities just multiply. And what is innovation um, you know, to one company might be all technology to another. And it's that diversity and the, uh, you know, the breadth of sectors that create all the opportunity. Which is why, you know, in the work we do, our strapline tends to be uh, connecting industry, creating opportunity. 
So it's a business opportunity program, but the side effect of that is massive, massive environmental benefit. And just to give an example of that, uh, in the first six years of something called the NIST program, the National Industry Symbiosis program, which ran in the UK, in the first six, year, six years, uh, something like 35 million tonnes of CO2 were reduced, 45 million tonnes diverted away from landfill. But at the same time, they gave industry something like 3 billion euros of benefit, created 10,000 jobs. So you can have the win-win-win of economic benefit, environmental gain, and social benefit. And it's, it's done by bringing that diverse and different sectors together. If I return once more to the um, ecosystem analogy that I'm going to continue flogging, um, if you look at you know, if you look at ecosystems, often nature fares best when just left to her own devices and, you know, when, when no one intervenes. So, yeah. you know, why is it that this, it, you know, it, it sounds like a no-brainer the way you describe it, the benefits seem obvious. Why aren't industries able to do this for themselves and where do you see the role of an organisation such as yours? Well, I, th I think uh, there's a number of reasons. Uh, uh, one, I think that we still have um, market failure. We have market failure around information, we have market failure around pricing, so I think most people would agree that uh, pricing of carbon, pricing of water is much, in, in fact there's, sometimes there's no pricing at all there. And uh, we live in an imperfect world in terms of information, so a small company uh, whose focus is on producing a product by the end of the week it doesn't have the time or resources to look outside the company boundaries for opportunity, which is where I think this facilitated role of industry symbiosis comes into its own. And by operating across you know, resources of all types, that's why you get the, uh, in fact, the environmental benefit as well as the business benefit. Uh, but I don't think um, small companies, micros, have the capacity, the time, the inc inclination or, or perhaps even the incentive to do this type of activity. It sounds like what, what you're able to, to offer organisations is actually sort of, um, you know, hits the two sort of real um, major challenges for, for industry in terms of driving competitiveness whilst uh, responding to environmental challenges. Um, that sounds like a, you know a fantastic thing to be able to achieve. Um, where would you say that you know at the beginning I said I had no idea what industrial symbiosis was. Whether or not people are familiar with the terminology, where would you say that the uh, benefits of what you're able to achieve is in terms of the industry consciousness and perhaps also political consciousness as well? Well, I think we've made uh, tremendous progress over the last even five years. Uh, so uh, five years ago, uh, you wouldn't find any reference to industry symbiosis in policy, for example. Uh, but now we find industry symbiosis in the roadmap to resource-efficient Europe. We find it in the Waste Framework, uh, Framework Directive. We find it increasingly around the world. And now the type of program that we pioneered here in the UK is being operated across six continents, you, know, you can look at uh, Australia, Brazil, China, Mexico, Turkey, Poland, Hungary. So it's gathering mm -hmm. momentum all around the world. And it's been recognised by institutions like the OECD and uh, even the, uh, in fact, the third sector or, or NGO community like uh, the World Bank uh, Fund for Nature, Forum for the Future. So in a very short space of time, we're finding it both in the... Uh, the political and policy cycle, but also in civil society as well. So it seems to have universal mm. backing. And um, if you think about it, you know something which you know does have this you know win-win-win uh, uh, ought to have that kind of support. Yeah, it, it certainly should do. And I can see how um, I can see how someone, an organisation in industry, would you know would think yes, we want to learn from what different sectors are doing, what different types of business is doing, and be quite open to that. I suppose I'm, I feel a bit cynical to think that um, the same thing would apply. Speaking about international growth of of, of uh, industrial symbiosis, you know, is it 
is it still that straightforward when you're trying to get different nations to work together, you've got different cultures working together? Mm. Well, I, th I think when we talk internationally, I've, uh, I've literally just come back from the uh, Global Green Growth Forum, which is in Cape, uh, Copenhagen, and uh, there were many world leaders there, many CEOs from uh, major companies, Unilever, Nike, uh, Masky, etc. And um, what came across from that uh, 3GF was, uh, you know, uh, businesses want a level playing field. Uh, that came across strong and clear. But also I think there's messages that they're beginning to realise that the uh, traditional business model is not sustainable. And in fact, a gentleman from Tata said that your, your, your growth strategy is actually your sustainability strategy. Mm -hmm. It's not outside. It has to be your sustainability strategy. Uh, I think the difference with industrial symbiosis is that actually we don't need to wait for international agreements. It's something we can do today. It is a, I would say, no-cost investment because if the uh, public sector invests, it gets a return on that investment. And in the UK, Manchester Economics calculated that UK government got between six and nine pounds back in direct taxation for every pound it invested in the programme, on top of getting all the benefits of carbon, job creation, landfill diversion. So I'd like to put it forward as almost a no-brainer. But yep. sometimes it takes that little bit extra push. I see. Okay, well, I think green growth today with no waiting is certainly <laughs> a no-brainer. Um, Peter, thank you very much for joining us and for introducing us to the concept of industrial symbiosis. You're very welcome, and thank you. Thank you.